Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with card videos. As usual, the beginning of the month has just been nuts, but anyhow, this was the video that was supposed to go up last week, because I was the host of the Color Throwdown Challenge. Anyway, this is the card I made for it. The Lovely Layers Tulips Wafer Die Set from Honeybee came back in stock. This was released couple months ago? I forget when it was released. Always super popular. All of their lovely layers sets are super popular. I love them. They're just fabulous and this set is no exception. These tulips are huge, which you'll see as I like put the card together. So what I did was off camera I die cut everything. I used um, Lawn Fawn Guava cardstock and then Simon's Banana Yellow and Simon's Mint cardstock to die cut all of the pieces. And you can do whatever you want. You can just die cut the pieces from color cardstock, layer them together, call a day, they'll look fabulous. Um, these wafer dies, because they imprint or like emboss, you know, lines and detail and things like that. And then when you layer it all together, it's all fabulous. Um, I've also shown, you know, using like watercolor paper and using different um, sprays and inks and all the things. Like there's, the sky's the limit. For these ones today, I did the colored cardstock and then I wanted to add a bit of depth and dimension to it all. So I'm using Simon's Positively Saturated Inks and for these like strawberry colored ones, I'm using Guava and Watermelon and I'm using my little um, Waffle Flower shader brushes. I did a video on these. I think these came out last month. You guys, my sense of time is just off. Anyway, <laughs> I will link to that video because it was also tulips as well. I, I have a thing for tulips. I have a thing for everything. But anyway, when it comes to card making, it's like, these are my favorite. I do love tulips. They're fabulous. And these little brushes are great. I'm using the zero shader brushes and the size one. So the zero, the teeny tiny ones, that one you can see right on the right there. It's just little. And then the size one is a little bit bigger. And I just use those with the inks to add that bit of depth and dimension. You could do this with markers or color pencils, anything like that. You know, again, sky's the limit. I really like using the inks though, because it, one, it just gives me another use of my inks. But also with these little brushes, I have a lot more control versus using like my larger blending brushes, which I'll use a larger one for a different um, part of this card. But the more I'm using these brushes, I'm just, I'm liking them. I have a lot more, like, control of where I want to put the ink. So I use two shades of ink for all the different pieces. So for the yellow, I was using Sunbeam and Citrine. So a medium yellow and then a darker yellow. And then just layering them. Super simple, just like all the other ones. They seem overwhelming when you look at just the die set, you know, and all the pieces. But then once you have everything die cut, they just it's a no-brainer and there's also guides like honeybee provides all the guides like the layering guides to show you how to put it all together and it just works so those little brushes i also use the little waffle flower brush holders as well and i'll link to those because i keep them all i did i showed that in the previous video with these brushes um i keep them on little ikea shelves and they're just cute and i like them so anyway with the greenery i die cut that from mint cardstock and then i used Dublin and Lucky inks for those and just same thing went in with the lighter shade and the brushes and then would go in with the darker and just add that dimension and it just gives it that extra something so I was working on scratch paper for all of this you know grid paper works I always have a stack of you know random scrap paper that I will use to kind of somewhat contain the ink because I'm really bad for picking it up. Plus I want a to do a white card base. And I knew if I got, you know, ink on my work surface, it's just, it's gonna get on my hands and then it's gonna get on the card. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So to adhere the little stems to these tulips, what I found was just easiest was I used a dab of my craft tacky glue and then I just used washi tape, like my go-to spellbinders tape that I use for everything um, because you're not going to see the back of it anyway. But the tape kind of holds it in place until the glue fully dries and then they're good to go. 
So it's the same thing I do with any other little, you know, wafer dye pieces that I have to adhere. I've shown that in a ton of videos is the combo of liquid glue and washi tape just works. So I got everything adhered. And then my card base, like I said, white card base, um, four and a quarter by five and a half standard A2 card. I masked off right where the fold is. And then I'm using one of my large Simon blending brushes and some soft navy ink and just blending that from the edges towards the center. I'm not trying to get a perfect blend with this. Like I could work at it more if I wanted, if I wanted that, you know, really smooth, nice blend. It ain't going to matter because I'm putting a die cut over it. And also these things do also smooth out as they dry. These are the original formula, the soft navy one. So I just blended, like I said, darker towards the outside. And then I want a kind of a lighter area towards the center. And then that wafer die is another, like kind of an oldie but goodie favorite. It came out however many releases ago. This is the Secret Garden A2 cover plate that I love so much. So figured out kind of what I was doing here. So I've got my blended bit of color on the background. And then I kind of fiddled with, you know, where I was going to place everything. And then while I was doing this, I was like, it needs splatter. So I will get to that in a second. But before I do the splatter, I wanted to stamp the inside of the card first. So I used the little squeeze the day sentiment set. And I'm going to stamp one sentiment on the inside of the card, the one that just says, have a beautiful day. And I'm going to ink that up with that same soft navy ink. And then the other sentiment from the same set, I'm just going to stamp onto a scrap of soft navy cardstock. So I've got everything lined up on my Misty. Use my anti-static powder tool. This just keeps the embossing powder from clinging to anything other than the stamped sentiment. And then I'm going to stamp the sentiment in clear embossing ink. And I'm going to stamp it a couple times, not pressing too hard because especially with sentiments or anything with really fine detail, you don't want to mush it into the cardstock because you lose a lot of that detail or sometimes you'll start obscuring the letters. So if you find that your heat embossing when you're with sentiments are turning into like a blob, don't press so hard. You know, it's better to ink it up and stamp it more than once than it is to just like mush it down like we do with like a great big stamp. So coated that with detail white embossing powder, melted that with my heat tool, and then I used one of the coordinating wafer dies taped in place with my washi tape and then I'll die cut that sentiment and then like I said splatter so first I'm going to adhere that um, secret garden die cut I die cut that from the same white cardstock and then I'm just going to add craft tacky glue around the perimeter and then a few dots here and there on the backs of the leaves I think that's another reason why I love this wafer die because it's not super finicky either like super easy to add adhesive get in place and I'm done. <laughs> so I'm going to adhere this into place. And then once this is adhered, um, I, I just I had to, I had to add splatter. I needed more of that navy to just kind of finish off this card. So I'm going to put this in my splat box and I pulled out chipped sapphire distress paint, which I don't think is even available anymore because Ranger did discontinue a bunch of the colors of distress paint. The actual colors like chip staff are still available in the inks and the sprays and all the things, but it's not available in paint. But anyway, there's a, other ways around this. I was being finicky, like I said. So I started with chip sapphire, but it was too, it's got too much of a purple undertone. And like I said, I was being p picky, finicky, whatever. So I pulled out prize ribbon distress paint. And that is of course much more blue. You could use just prize ribbon. It'd be fine. Um, even better would be prize ribbon if you don't have chip sapphire prize ribbon and just the teensiest bit of black soot. Like I said, I'm, I was getting finicky. And when it comes to, you guys know me and splatter. And when it comes to like mixing paints and colors, I don't know, this just, I really enjoy it. <laughs> so I mix those two together to get the right shade <laughs> of soft navy. Uh, like I said, when it comes to splatter though, honestly, you could just like use the prize ribbon, it'd be fine. And, or if you don't have it, use white or perfect pearl powder mix of water, you know, and you'd get shimmery splatter. Trust me, I thought about that too. I could have just, you guys know. Anyway, I added a bit more splatter with this because I was being picky and since I'd mixed it up, so I added a bit more to the background, just picked up with a paintbrush. I'd added a bit of water to that paint to thin it out a bit. Let that completely dry 
once it was dry, now I can start assembling my tulips. And now you can see just how big, like the main tulip of this wafer dust set is huge. You know, it just takes up this A2 card, which is awesome. This works really nicely though. Like these size of die cuts, you can make, you know, larger cards with it, no problem. Or you could leave off the big one and use just the medium size one because it's a gorgeous size as well. Like, I love these lovely layers, wafer dies. They're fabulous. So anyway, I adhered my little cluster of tulips and then the sentiment I decided to pop up with some thin foam squares just to give it just a little bit of dimension. And then once I got that adhered, I'm going to add bling, of course, <laughs> as is tradition. So I got the sentiment adhered. And then for my bling, I have some Trinity stamps, night sky, navy, uh, pearls, very proper, you know, to go with these colors. And then I also have some Studio Cadia. These are magic pearls. I think I had ordered these a while ago. They don't look like anything special online. In real life, they're really pretty. They have like a silver back to them and they're kind of clear, but they have like an iridescent shimmer to them. It's hard to explain, but in like they're so pretty in real life. So I added more of those than I was planning because I was like, oh, I like, I like. <laughs> so once I was happy with all the bling placement, I stuck them down to this card with my craft tacky glue. And then once that's it all like done and dry and good to go, I paired this card with a yellow envelope and that finished it off. So as always, I will link below the video to my blog post and I'll link to all the supplies I used and all that stuff. So you can check that out below if you are interested. And then as always, thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing, for thumbs upping, commenting, sharing, all of it. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye. <laughs>